All right, lady fan, heckler question. Uh, hey there, Bill. I'm a lady fan, and I would like your opinion on a situation Amy Schumer encountered on her tour in Stockholm. Early on in her set, a male heckler shouted, show us your tits. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. She heard it, had the audience point to the guy and shut him down pretty quickly with a few jokes. All right, good for her. She also said if he yelled out again, she'd have him kicked out. Well, literally five seconds later, he yelled out again. Yeah, this guy's a class clown, you know. Next person does that gets detention. And she did have him thrown out of the show. Well, it's her show. She can do what she wants. My question is, at what point would you have a heckler thrown out or when have you had a heckler thrown out? This is a great question. I have no problem with her controlling the vibe at her own show, especially when there were a ton of other audience members for whom the show might have been ruined if the guy kept shouting. Yeah, they came there to hear her act. You know what I mean? He got one show me your tits. She fucking rode with that and said, hey, you know, it's not like she, it doesn't sound like, you know, unless she was talking about her tits, which it doesn't sound like she was. It doesn't sound like it had any context to what she was talking about. If someone just yells that out, then if, they, if someone's just going to just keep yelling, fuck you, blah, 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 or something like that, then, you know, as a comic, you can just stand there and just trash the guy for the whole hour and still get paid. But like the rest of the crowd is not going to walk away happy. That has been my experience when you do something like that. So anyways, she continues. She says, I have no problem with her controlling the vibe at her own show, especially when there were a ton of other audience members for whom the show might have been ruined if this guy kept shouting. However, I've also seen you handle hecklers in your specials and shows without having them ejected. Um, This case might be different since his his heckle was sexual in nature. And as far as I know, no heckler has ever shouted, show us your dick. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> do you on stage oh my god that would fucking kill me if somebody yelled that anywho just curious is what you thought about it the video of the situation at this link if you want to see it um can't wait for season two of f is for family and best of luck with your upcoming special thank you very much um once you're i don't know i think once you're at a level where you're selling tickets and it's your crowd and everything uh, I think you just do run your show how you want to have your show run. I know that there's comics out there that say no heckling. There's other people that don't give a shit about heckling. I'm one of those people. I don't, um, I don't mind 90% of heckling. You know, it's that 10% where you just didn't want to be there or you're, you're just completely fucking like wasted drunk. Um, and you're just there, you're just going to, you're going to, even if I get the better of you, you're still just not going to shut up and you're just there to ruin everyone's good time. At that point, I would say like, listen, and, and I would, you know, give the person the money back. It's like, I'm not trying to be a dick, you know, maybe next time or go see another comic. But um, I've only had to do that a handful of times. Um, when I first did the Opie and Anthony show, there was this guy, I remember came down, and uh, he just didn't get it. Like, he came down on the first show and was just screaming and yelling and screaming and yelling the whole fuck. It was, it was crazy. And um, then he showed up, like, two nights later again. And he sat right down front, and one of the waitresses overheard him. I'm going to yell out the punchlines to all of his jokes. So... I, what I should have done was immediately say, get that guy out of here. Get him out of here. Give him his money back. I'll take a picture with him. Just get him out of here because I don't want to deal with this guy. This guy's wasted, and it's going to ruin the show for everybody. I mean, he was here two nights ago. I can't come up with 60 new minutes in fucking two nights. And he was deliberately going there to mess up the fucking show. But the weird thing was, was he didn't go there in a malicious way. He thought it was funny. And it was one of those things that was really in the spirit of the Opie and Anthony show. But this wasn't the Opie and Anthony show. This was a stand-up comedy show. So it was an awkward thing. And and I had to get him out of there or else he was going to fuck it up for everybody. And he was fucking beside himself. I mean, you don't understand. I love you, though. You don't understand, right? So they ended up kicking him out classic way like 
the way a comedy club kicks somebody out is they get them just beyond the threshold of the door and immediately turn a blind eye to the person. Like, well, that takes care of that, right? And they inevitably come back in, which this guy did. And I was selling CDs. This is how long ago it was. I was selling CDs after the show, and I look up, and there's this fucking guy again pleading his case with me. And then he got so mad. He goes, I'm never coming one of your shows again. And I was like, good, good. The amount of stress and anxiety he brought to me, blah, blah. And then like the end of the night, someone had broken the window out front of the club. And I always thought it was him. I have no idea. So um, my thoughts on heckling is basically uh, it's a part of the art form. And I also think it's, it's a part of the art form that makes it really cool. But that's also, I don't define the rules of it. It's just one of the things that I enjoyed that always scared me in the beginning that I always thought was so cool about comics that people would yell at them and they could just handle them and then continue on with their act. Um, and the way I look at it, I say a lot of ignorant shit when I'm on stage and, uh, you know, provoke people and stuff. Like, I can't expect them to sit on their hands the whole time. And I, you know, I like it. I actually enjoy when people yell shit at me, you know, to a point, you know. But if, if it's on topic... Somebody yell shit out. I always go, what'd you say? Which is, you know, I go back and forth. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of a part of being a comedian. But I think after a while and once, you know, you said it was in Stockholm, Sweden. I mean, that's an important show. You're going over there. You're not like the other ones are, but you're in another country. You want to make sure you're having a good show. And right out of the gate, if someone comes, they're coming at you like that, um, they're testing you. And I know a lot of it's going to be made like, you know, oh, it's a sex thing and, you know, that's not a heckle. This, it's a this, that, that. No, it, it's, it's the basic thing where it's like you're being tested by the crowd. So what the comic has to do is throw the fucking hammer down or else the crowd takes control of the show and you're going to have a long fucking evening. So there's a million different ways to do it. That's how she chose to do it. It's her fucking show. So there you go. That's what I think. I think however the, however the comedian decides to handle it is, is the way to handle it. Um, I don't know. But I was just making all the crazy, some of the shit that people have said to me over the years. Best one ever was when I was at Dangerfield. And somebody yelled out, uh, anything read in on stage is a, and you said faggot. <laughs> so they used like homophobia for whatever fucking reason and uh, I'll never forget that heckle because it was so like anything read and on stage it was like it was like worded like I was in second grade um, but this guy was like I don't like the, the, the anger that was coming off of this guy and the group of people that he was in with I knew if I engaged and there was no security at that club and I could not beat up him, much less him and two of his fucking friends. And I just, you know, I liked the mic stand where it was rather than wrapped around my Charlie Brown head. So I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I, I've had, uh, you know, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, the memory's coming back. I've, I've had shit thrown at me. Somebody threw dental floss at me one time. I remember I was talking about working in a dental office when I was younger, and somebody in the middle just threw dental floss like that would add to the bit somehow. I had pissed off a woman in Tampa one time, and she threw a glass of ice at me. Um, somebody threw a dinner roll at me. I had a lot of shit thrown at me. Um, and then just every fucking thing. I remember being on stage one time at the Boston Comedy Club and there was these two black women sitting in the front and there was barely anybody and it was late night and I was bombing and there was this two black women in the front and one of them had put her head on the other girl's shoulder and was pretending to sleep and it bothered me for about six years that because I had a glass of water on stage with a straw. It bugged me for six years that I didn't think in that moment. You know when you put your finger over the top of the straw and you keep the water in it to come over and just and then let it go right on her face? <laughs> <laughs> that's what kills you as a comic it's the thing you should have said or the thing you, you could have done afterwards 
Um, but I really think that that, to me, that is one of, like, when I used to listen to the Richard Pryor albums and stuff when I was growing up, like, one of the coolest things ever was, you know, listening to him going back and forth and his unbelievable special that he did down in Long Beach where they had him go on early. He, he just wanted to get out there and people hadn't gotten back to their seats. Like, I really felt like that interaction there, it was like it, it just put him in this zone and he just stayed in there for like an hour and 18 minutes. And I think with that type of shit and the guy going up with the camera and stuff, I, like no security, I really feel like that, you know, that interaction with the crowd, you know, that energy that they were giving him, I, I think that that's what, why that, that specialist, what it is. So I'm not against tackling or anything like that, but I, you know, any, every comic, like I said, you know, if they feel like it's crossing the line, you just feeling it's at that tipping point and I got to chop the head off somebody. Sometimes you got to do that. So good for her. 